make that thing mess around. I have a concept, especially about keyboard players who sing, because we don't have our hands to express ourselves. So I think that's why a lot of keyboard players, Ray had a different rock, you know, Stevie has a different rock. You know, even me, I have a different rock. And I think it's because this is the only thing we have that can express what we're feeling, that in our faces. Hey, what's up, GQ? I'm PJ Morton, and this is The Breakdown. First up, soul. What, what, what do we play? There's definitely been live situations where uh, I just had to fall in and figure out what this song that I never heard was. More often than not, where I grew up in church, uh, my dad, being the pastor, would pull out songs or old hymns that he grew up on that I never heard in my life. And I would just have to try to follow along and figure it out. Part of the beauty, I think, of being creative is not being fearful of the unknown, it, it usually takes you to a place. Shout out to John Baptiste, my fellow New Orleans brother, my fellow Purple Knight, same high school. So they actually recorded his hands to get the authentic playing for the movie. So he is a genius, he's a virtuoso, and so I, I knew that the playing couldn't be anything but amazing in, the, in this movie. When you're improvising, usually there's an unspoken language going on for you to know when it's your time to, to take a solo. And sometimes it is actually verbal. Like in this clip, the band leader, she told him when it was his turn. Uh, sorry, I zoned out a little back there. Being in the zone is, uh, is, is unexplainable. Um, I know everybody watching that scene could relate to losing yourself. It's pure bliss. It's like, uh, I always feel blessed and like that I just have an extra cheat code that everybody doesn't have because when I'm going through stuff or feeling sad or something, or I lost somebody that I love or, I can go and play and go to another place. Every emotion I wanted to say, every word I wanted to say was speaking for me. Next up, big. Piano lessons. Three years. We do. I think this song for a lot of people is, is the first song they ever learn. Uh, even if they, before they know they're gonna be a musician in life, uh, just as a kid, this is, this is one of the first. <laughs> uh, bass notes and treble notes. So I, I would say that bass is the foundation, is that. Um, and treble is up higher. So in this regard, you have uh, And that's the treble, but then you got the bass to hold it down. Kind of tells the whole story. This is all by itself. That's light and you don't know what's happening, but this makes it feel like a full song. It completes the story. Next up, Ray. I signed you because I sensed something special in you, not because you sound like Nat Cole or Charles Brown. First of all, it's the opposite of where we are in music today where they were looking for him to be absolutely original. They didn't want him to be Nat King Cole. They didn't want him to be anybody else. They wanted him to be Ray Charles. I think this is profound because a lot of times today, if something's a hit or popular, then they do the opposite. They say, I need one just like that. Let me go get that. Sing it. Yeah. It ain't like I can read the lyrics. Okay, well, it's uh, key of G. Okay, key of G. Uh -huh. So, that's funny. If we're talking about keys, uh, he said the key of G, and I pressed the G, and they're not even in the key of G. So, it's giving away some of the truth already. 
Here we go. Yeah. Two, three. You, you can talk about the pit barbecue. The band was jumping. The people too, they're doing the mess around. One other thing that's cool, I don't want to keep making it about music today and the music industry, but like his head of his label wrote his hit single. How many heads of music at labels, executives could write a hit single right now in music today? But it shows how much care was put into the music uh, back then. Stride piano is basically where it's striding. It's usually going back and forth and walking on its own. You see this left hand walking, so like. Ray is, you know, maybe one of the first, if not the first, to really bring mixing that soul and that gospel and that church. They called it devil music when he changed the lyrics and made it R&B songs, but his, that was his style. I have a concept, especially about keyboard players who sing, because we don't have our hands to express ourselves. So I think that's why a lot of keyboard players, Ray had a different rock, you know, Stevie has a different rock, you know, even me, I have a different rock. And I think it's because this is the only thing we have that can express what we're feeling, that in our faces. I always end in some type of flurry at the end of songs. When he did that, I smiled because, I mean, that that is probably something similar to what I would have done. He just put the cherry on, on, on top at the end, you know? Next up, Love and Mercy. I may not always love you, but long as there are stars above you, I think his playing was just okay, uh, but I think it's because it, the, the playing wasn't the focus necessarily. He was writing the song. Sometimes I'm playing to show that I can play or for the, the keys to be a feature. And sometimes it's just passive. I think in this way, it was just a tool in his toolbox to get his idea out. The acting was great because that is the way you would be playing, not perfectly when you're trying to figure something out. The world could show nothing to me. So what good would living do me? I wouldn't call this simple. I would call it like sneaky simple. Like it gives the appearance that it, it is simple, which is the genius in it. Like that that that's what makes this one of the best songs of all time. It is not simple by any means. It's changing keys all the time. It's like moving constantly. I can't just sit down. I can't just play it right now because it's doing so many changes. But the melody stays simple on top of all those changes, which is what makes this song so brilliant. God only knows what I'd be without you. I think Brian Wilson is one of the greats. God only knows is one of my favorite songs of all time. I mean, like, I think top three best songs of all time. But I think his playing, um, much like a lot of my favorites uh, who are singer-songwriters, th their playing is only theirs and it's signature to them. I love singer-songwriters who are perfect for their songs. And that's how I think of, 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 of Brian Wilson's playing. Next up, Rocket Man. Yes, songs can get written like that. I mean, I've written some of my greatest songs in 10 minutes, you know, and some that weren't as good took, you know, a month. <laughs> you just never know, because I've written horrible songs in 10 minutes as well. But that's the, that's the exciting thing about creativity is you never quite know how it's gonna come at you. You never quite quite know when you should take a long time on it or, or just let it be. Recording your piano part and singing at the same time, uh, some engineers won't want you to do it because it, 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 
the sound of it, it makes it harder to separate things. But I've recorded many songs that way because playing it and singing it at the same time puts you in a different place than if the, the piano's already there and then you're singing your vocal on top of it. Of course it can happen, but I know when I'm playing, I make different decisions vocally than I would if, I'm, if I wasn't playing. Next up, the pianist. That looked like live. I mean, it looked like he was actually playing that in the moment. And it was, it was brilliant. It's not something that you can just pick up. That takes years and years of, uh, of studying and practice. I definitely think that classical has had an influence. I think as creators, we will pull from many things. So if we hear something, we may not take the whole piece. We may not take the, the, that of it, but we'll take something else from it. It's difficult playing in the cold. I, 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 a specific memory came to my mind, which was a special night. I was playing the White House, President Obama's first year, but it was also the coldest my fingers had ever been in my life. When your hands are locked up, it's hard to play any notes, let alone something like quickly, because you can't even feel where the keys are. That is not easy. <laughs> I don't even know what we're talking about. It's, it's simplicity. That that that's hard to do right there. That's like stride on another level the way he's doing that. His playing was pretty perfect. I mean, he was pretty on top of it. There is something that I noticed towards the end that could be viewed as a mistake, like a, a note slip or something, but it's almost like it would have been too perfect if that didn't happen. It, it kind of gave humanity to it. I am the, the like number one supporter of perfection in, in mistakes. That perfection comes from a combination of unperfect things coming together. Next up, call me by your name. That sounds different. Did you change it? Well, I changed it a little bit. Why? I just played it the way Liszt would have played it if he'd altered box version. As creators, we think of other people's styles and use their styles to change another song all the time. And my sister uh, was a classical musician. We would take those classical pieces all the time and like church them up, you know, or or add some soul to them. Oddly enough, you know, like one of my biggest songs is a, is a remake of, of the Bee Gees' How Deep Is Your Love. But it's really just the same thing I've been doing with my sister since I was a little kid, which is how would this person do it? Or how would this soul, you know, how can this be a soulful version of, of this? And, and I couldn't have made that out of thin air. I couldn't have written How Deep Is Your Love out of, out of thin air, but them being brilliant allowed me to add my thing to the conversation. Yeah, his facial expression, I feel like he, he had some anger built up inside. <laughs> it looked a lot like rebellion, and I think the best musicians and the best artists are the ones where it all comes through you. Next up, Soul Food. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, genres get crossed so much. I, I guess I would say this, it, it's kind of classical in its nature, but it felt like a pop ballad at first, and then they went into. And that is more like a R&B type uh, gospel thing. So they, they, they went through the different genres, and then when the beat came in, it, it, it went from like classic pop to, to R&B.
I would adjust my playing to to a dancer's movement. You know, sometimes there are musicians who are there to do what they're there to do, and it doesn't matter what else is happening. To me, the worst kind of, that's the worst kind of musicians. The ones that are aware, not just of a dancer, but of the drummer and how loud or soft he's playing, or the bass player, the guitar player. Being aware makes you a better musician. So being able to adjust and give emotion to what's happening with the dancer, I think is important. Next up, Behind the Candelabra. I'd like to try playing it now at 16 beats per bar. I thought uh, his Michael Douglas's playing was phenomenal. I mean, I'm actually really curious to know how they did that. Did he, if he actually played that or, because his face was in the shot, it looked like if he wasn't playing it, he was playing something close to that. It's basically, like I said, it was that, that boogie woogie thing. Then he did it in double time and did the stride on a double time. It, that's, that's virtuoso stuff. I mean, that's, that's, that's the best of the best stuff right there. I call it Boogie Woogie, but it's the same. Just that walk, that, that type of uh, 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 uh. I think when players do things like that, that's part of the performance. I don't think that it actually hits the keys any differently or makes you play any differently. That is when everything is coming through you, you know, when, when the instrument becomes an extension of you. You don't want them to just hear you playing, but you want them to see you playing. And finally, Corpse Bride. According to plan. I don't know that I see an advantage in playing a duet. If, I mean, that, that sounds more like a nightmare to me. I mean, just having somebody sitting next to you playing, like you only have these keys, you know, right here, and, and they have those. So I think it's cool for a movie. Uh, I don't think it's ideal in real life. Like dueling pianos, I think is cool. Or when you both have your whole piano to go back and forth with, I think that's cool because then they can play some parts that you can't play but they still have the range. Them being in a minor key, I don't know what key they were in. It's like that minor thing versus I said major thing. If they were playing in major, it would have sounded happy. Would have been happy, but they were, and that, I think that attributed to the, the sadness. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you so much for hanging with me, watching these clips with me. I had so much fun, but that's a wrap. I'll see you next time. Peace. <laughs>